Well, welcome to our special budget meeting for Thursday morning, October 12th. I feel like it's the day. <coughs> um, barring uh, an, an actual agenda, we'll, we'll just step through things. Judy, do you mind calling the road? Don't mind. Stokes? I'm here. Deborah Leonard? Here. Tausch? Here. McQueen? Here. Brown? Here. Also present, you know, Village Manager Johnny Burns, Finance Director in the Blankenship, Chief of Police. Page Burns? Camper. Right. Camper. Camper. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be Amy Blankenship, but I know. <laughs> really, I've camped her before, so just yeah. to know. Do you really Please. know Amy? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah, we, don't, we don't really know. Uh, nice tables, by the way. Mm -hmm. Are these yeah, thank they you, they are Johnny, nice for, for this is. This is what's an A and B now. Yeah. So if they're outside okay. of A and B or a council, we know we got a problem. Okay. It's so. very light. Yes. So what do we do with the uh, old A and B tables? They're downstairs in the gym. Okay. Cool. Okay. Easily stacked. Yeah, they stacked and high. Well. Yep. Okay. So we have more down there than we'll These are dedicated to the upstairs. The other ones are dedicated to the downstairs and to be rented out for events. Then they can go outside. They can go outside. Cool. Cool. <laughs> Ready. So this is the first of. Uh, one, two, or three? Two. two? We're going for two. <laughs> all right, all right. Let's split the difference, huh? We have three scheduled. Wishful thinking. No, I, and, I, and I hope it happens. Um, so this is, uh, again, the first of, of a series of, of budget meetings to, um, to, to feel where Amy's thinking is with regard to the budget, budgeting process. Um, and, and for us as council to share our thoughts, concerns, wishes, hopes, dreams um, in that regard. Um, Amy, did you want to start or do, or should yep. we? Yeah, okay, I'll just go ahead and I'll hand the floor over to you and you walk us through or we'll uh, jump in as needed. Um, yeah, so I just kind of want to tell you what the process has been to date so that everybody understands. Um, I think you've probably seen the massive spreadsheet that's got 20 tabs on it that has uber detail to it. Mm -hmm. So we go down to account level when we budget. Um, I take the first pass based on 2023's actual to start 2024. We did that with uh, April's data. Then I went back and put June's actuals in, gave it to all the department heads. They went through each of their account numbers and each supervisor went through their um, specific departments and made notes, asked questions, uh, made additions, deletions, changes, right? So all of these account numbers at account number level detail have been looked at by Ben, Brad, Tanner, Paige, Samantha, Samantha Johnny and I um, went through some of the bigger um, timing of things. Hey, uh, what's going to happen with the $1.2 million grant with J&T and all that fun stuff. So um, those are back in there for 2024. I, I, I put them back in there for 2024 knowing that we probably wouldn't get to them in 2023 with all the legal wranglings. So that's kind of where we're at. Um, and then we have asked for uh, council to put in Economic or um, Environmental Commission um, mediation is, uh, has put in a um, budget request, um, and then every council member has put in kind of their hey, this is what I think PAC has put in money. And so this uh, budget was done when did I get back? Like October 2nd. So if, it, if anything came in after that, it's not in there yet, but I still have it, okay? Because once I make a change, I got to change it 20 different places. I'd love to say that this is all automated, but it is not. And so I, I, I'm careful to only make changes when I have to. So after this meeting, we'll get some feedback from you guys on um, new different, hey, we got to do this. No, we probably don't want to do that. Or did you know about this? We'll make those changes. And then our second budget meeting, we'll have all those changes in it. And we'll go through that, OK? So um, currently, as we sit, the budget for 2024 is projecting a $1.9 million loss. This is just on the memo that I gave you. 
and we budgeted for a $2.9 million loss last year. Um, I do have some September 2023 actuals to share with you too, so once we go through this, I'll walk you through that. Um, 2024 revenues are budgeted at 15.6 million compared to 12.8 uh, for 2023. Um, mostly it's that 1.2 uh, million dollar grant for the water capital. And then there's also, we have electric water and sewer rate increases and a um, income tax increase of about 150,000. So that makes up the difference. So that water grant comes in as revenue and goes comes in and goes out as expense and comes in as revenue and there's a timing difference to it because we're reimbursed. So, so it, it's a pass through. It's a wash, but it has to be in both sides. In the same year, when we get the money the same year we spend it. Maybe. It's yeah. it's kind of a yes and no. It, um, I think once we get the we had set up an advance for it so that we could pay. And then as soon as the first reimbursement came in, it paid us back and we could clear that advance. We'll probably just end up canceling the advance. Uh, I'll wait till November until I find out if we if anything's gonna happen in 2023. And then um, it probably will span more than one year. But that's all handled with POs and open POs and all that fun stuff. So it's not, um, not a huge deal. Um, expenses are projected to be uh, 17.5 million compared to 16.9 in 2023. Um, I think the important part to note is wages makes up 1 point, or 3.1 million in budgeted expense and we have 55 FTEs. Um, 2023 wages were 2.8 million and we had 53 FTEs. And we'll go through some of the details of that. Um, Johnny brought back some uh, cost of living projections for other municipalities around us. And so we're proposing that we do an increase of 3.5% for cost of living for next year. And um, I can show you some of the details on that. And we, we did do a 4% cost of living last year for 2023. Um, we did budget for sponsorships because we do not have special events nailed down yet. $50,000 to support, which it mirrors what we did this year, to support street fair, pride, all that fun stuff. That is separate from PAC and Environmental Commission. We're gonna break them out and special events will be sponsorships and PAC and Environmental Commission will be in their own line items. So it'll be easier on me and everybody else. Judy can call and look at things and understand better. So, cause they're all smooshed together right now. Um, so we did move loss in place down to affordable housing and the reason we did that into that fund is um, it was in the general fund so it kind of it's not representative of what it should be it doesn't really make a huge difference other than it's in its own separate fund now we budgeted just the same as we would for any other loss in place year we just moved everything down um, and that loss in place next year is budgeted for 162,000 and that includes the debt upkeep renovations. And then there's an additional $48,000 budgeted for affordable housing as we've done in the past. And that's 40,000 from the village and 8,000 from the mitigation fees from transient guest lodging. So that's where we stand on those big deals. We do have a police vehicle budgeted for 55,000. Um, I went out to the car with Florence the other day because I brought some stuff in and I thought, oh, this is a pretty car. They're not a pretty car. They're old cars. They're very old. They're very old cars. <laughs> <laughs> They're pretty on the outside. <laughs> Sorry, Mary. So are you saying that under a line item for affordable housing is loss in place and then the additional 48, as opposed to 48 going into loss in place? Right. They're separate. Okay. There's a, and they have, loss in place has its own set of department codes because we want to be able to track loss in place by itself. It's just in the affordable housing fund. It's always had its own codes. Yeah, yeah, it was in the general fund before. So not trying to muddy the water, just trying to get some of that slush out of general fund so that we, um, if we know we're going to support something, then we need to transfer the funds and it's more evident. I think it's more um, clear to people. Like when the auditors ask us, always do a resolution when you do a transfer that means people really understand we're taking money out of this fund and putting it into this fund. And we were kind of 
mashing it together when we had lost in place, especially if we have an affordable housing fund. So, so the 48, 40 is from the general fund like we did last year. Mm -hmm. That's a transfer. And the eight. eight. So mitigation fees, is that still kind That's, of frozen at 9,000 ish? Uh, oh, yeah, we just lost one or two of them. Two. Two. So it'll go down. Okay. Um, those are the grandfathered $1,500 uh, non owner occupied. Mm -hmm. um, when those go away, and we did lose two, they sold one and uh -huh. one. No, I sold both of them. Yes, they, they sold both of them. Yeah. So those will go down. Um, so we talked a little bit about cash flow, and um, we have right now our, our carryover balance is projected at $11 million. Um, 3.2 of it is encumbered, meaning we already have PO open for that, We're, and it might be something that's crossing over year end um, because it's a multi year project or something like that. And so we project uh, with the 3.2 encumbered to have $7.8 million left in cash at the end of the year, okay? And so we talked a little at finance committee, so I went back and pulled more detail. Um, 1.8 is in special revenue funds, 1.5 is in capital funds, 2.4 is in general, 2 million is in an enterprise, and then 56,000 is in fiduciary. So really the only money we can get to is 2.4 million in the general fund. Everything else has a restricted or designated purpose. What's fiduciary? The fiduciary ones are the little ones like um, refunds on uh, utilities that are sitting there at 38,000 38, or something like that. Um, the flour and sugar widows fund has a little balance. Anything that we hold that's not ours. So those are the baby funds. Um, checks checks that may have not cleared yet, things that truly aren't ours. Um, so that's kind of the overview of what we have thought. Do we have any more questions on? That's a pretty fast overview. Um, so there, <coughs> there used to be a concern about us. This is tangential. We're at 55 FTE. Used to be concerned about that. Did anything change administratively? No, that, well, and it's kind of a um, moving target, as a budget always is. Um, the two additional FTEs are actually um, tree trimming positions that we did, which probably are going to be moved to professional fees. We're going to contract those humans instead of owning those humans. So I haven't moved them back up yet. Um, Johnny wants to work with a company for a little bit to figure out if it's going to work. They're going to give us two people, the trucks, the safety equipment, the certifications, the insurance, the everything for a flat fee, and we only contract them for the weeks that we want. So I think financially it definitely makes sense. So is this a shift? Because I thought before it was going to be employees. So it was a shift. Uh, I had somebody reach out to me. I put her in contact with Ben. Uh, City of Lebanon does this with the same company um, to where they'll give us two employees uh, to do what we want them to do um, as a contract. So it's less money as if we was going to hire out for our own. So, so how is that different than what we do? Yeah. It, the, because when we hired out now, it was only for electric lines. And these, uh, this company is willing to do, do street trees, mowing grass if we want to. They're going to give us two employees to treat as our own. They'll be on the same schedule as our crews. And we don't have to pay the benefits, the insurance, the workers' comp, or anything like that. So, And then if we only use them 30 weeks out of the year, we don't pay for the other 22. Marianne, were you asking about the difference between the big tree trimming contract? Yeah. Um, they can do yeah, that. I think they just, she just explained yeah. that. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to know. What they basically will be directed by our staff, yes. but we'll just contract them. So that's going to be one thing that shifts. It's going to actually save some money, I think, because we're not going to have the bucket truck purchase and all that fun stuff. We'll be just, 
and I'll be moving it from salaries, dropping those FTEs into professional fees, dropping that one capital. So, but still, the trigger is over fifty FTEs, right? Where you can then um, become u unionized. Mm -hmm. So I I thought we had discussed in the past that we have good packages and um, and that we weren't so concerned about that issue, not to mention that, um, you know, maybe village values wise, um, we shouldn't be opposed to unions anyway. Um, but am I correct that the trigger is when you go over 50 FTEs? Okay. So, so that's, the, that's why that was an issue. You know, for but I also think when you go over 50, you gotta look at how many salary because they're not part of the union. Mm -hmm. Ten. That's ten. 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 Am I hearing you say that we're not across the 50 then because of the salary so. employees? Yeah, I mean, our FTEs haven't changed in the last two years very much at all. Um, I think they actually went down two years ago. Do, do, does part time get counted in as a, do they? <laughs> They're rolling up. Five. Okay. Yeah, so 55 FTEs may be 60 humans. And, and Paige has a lot of as needed and um, part timers. So, yeah, we probably have more than 55 bodies. Mm -hmm. So, it, would you mind just doing a, um, like, what, just, I'm just trying to get a sense of where we're going today. So, like, just do, like, a, what are you hoping to accomplish today? Or, like, what are the, I'm just trying to figure out where to put my sure. thoughts or ideas. So, um, there's some issues that are outstanding in the budget requests that have come from council and other places that I would like some direction on. You know, how do you feel about COLA? That kind of stuff. Um, we also want to... Um, we also want to, um, I think, iron out some of those issues so that I know what changes you want for the next one. I wanted to get your feeling on where, where do you want to land this year? Do it, and I'll let me talk about September uh, actuals first, and then we'll um, kind of go there, and then answer any questions you guys have. I, I mean, open book. We got nothing to hide. We've we've looked at this ad nauseum. I think all of us have. So. <laughs> so Distraction. Sorry. So did I follow? So basically, we're gonna. You want to do September actuals, then you want to talk about. You have some items like the cola that you want to get feedback we need, on. We probably need to talk about broadband as it relates to budget. You know, if we're going to put some money into some things, um, the staff had some suggestions for some budget issues that we would like to discuss. Um, and then I just kind of want to go over a few of those things so I get a better picture of, you know, if, if Marianne says I need $25,000 for environmental admission, she did not. And, and you're all like, um, no, 10 is fine. You know, then I need to know that. I just need some general guidance on some of those other requests. So That was a subliminal suggestion, by the way. So. <laughs> 10 I is fine. <laughs> okay. So September, then some like getting feedback on some things that would impact the budget. And then general questions, that's sort of the article. Yeah, any questions or concerns that you guys have on the overall big picture. OK. Um, and so then, and then you were saying you're hoping we're doing two meetings like this. So basically, in addition to checks at the council meetings. Mm -hmm. So basically, the way we should be thinking about this is between this meeting and one more meeting, that's where we would be providing the feedback or you know, having discussions to be able to get toward that end goal. Am I understanding correctly? Yeah. Okay. I mean, and we can do. If three. we need another meeting, we can. But that's what we're aiming. We for. already have it set up. I, my goal is to not drag this out, and let's just because. It's a moving target. Somebody's going to come at me and say, "Well, I need five thousand more for this," and I mean, we're always going to have that. If we, if it's a big issue that we're not sure of, let's just not put it in. We'll do supplemental right. early in the year. I mean, right. you guys are great about approving supplementals and making changes. So, um, I just it feels like a moving target continuously, and I'm trying to nail it down a little bit and say, "This is what we're going to do," um, and it's. I don't feel that it's unreasonable. I think all the items outstanding, if I include everything that's not in there, is only four hundred thousand dollars more. Okay. If you guys come at me and say, "Well, we're going to do two hundred thousand here," 
Okay, that's the discussion we need to have today. So. Only four hundred thousand. <laughs> that sounds. Out, out of the seventeen million dollar budget, it really that isn't really a ton. It isn't, um, and it, that's everything that we've like, you know, pie in the sky thrown out there. Do we want to do this? Do we not? You know, which comes first? That kind of stuff. So, I think Gavin suggested four hundred thousand. Four hundred thirty thousand. Not that he knows. <clears throat> not that I'm not, not that I've done any calculations. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, somebody's talked about this before today, I guess. <laughs> but that's good. So, um, this is a little preliminary because I have not completely finished the um, third quarter. I just worked on it last night. So, But I kind of want to show you where we're at. Um, and I didn't print it out on purpose because I haven't. They're good numbers, but I haven't finished the packet yet. So, um, we are we're doing fine. Is the is the answer? Um, at at November or at September thirtieth, twenty twenty three, we had eleven point five million dollars in cash. That's up from ten point nine at the beginning of the year. Okay, so we are still ahead. Um, five hundred thousand dollars. We're at. We have a budget surplus as of September thirtieth of five hundred thousand um, dollars, and we budgeted a budget loss of three million. Okay. Part of that is just so you remember, those ARPA funds were sitting there, three hundred ninety-two thousand. We implemented those to cut back on salary fees for police. Um, so we brought those into the fold. Um, which is making our income statement look better because we have more revenue, less expense. Um, it doesn't change our cash. It just makes our restricted cash unrestricted at this point. So um, I think, and this is crystal ball, I don't, I don't know October, November, December as far as volume here yet. I don't have that history so much. Um, we're going to be close to break even at year end. And that's mostly because some projects didn't happen, the 1.2 million, which was more expense in 2023, and then revenue in 2024 was the way it was budgeted. And then we've had, you know, we budget for salaries on day one. Everybody has their rate, and we've had position changes, we've had people leaving, we have open positions. Um, so that keeps us under, and it's not just the salaries, it's the benefits, um, which are about 26% and 31% for police. Um, that keep us under. And then I think uh, just a lot of management. I mean, we bought out the Dell workbooks and all those. We bought out that whole thing. Instead of paying $1,500 a month, we pay $10,000. We own it. Um, there are some timing issues with replacing that because they're all five years old. All, every stinking one of our things is five years old right now. We don't have like a transition plan, so we've asked um, tech advisors to help us plan replacement one year, two year, three year, five year, um, so that we don't get in a circumstance where everybody's stuff is five to seven years old. And then we're like, oh crap. Um, so um, September, any other huge questions on September? I, I mean, the reason, um, like I said, I just did this last night, forgive me. Um, the reason we're so, far ahead, I think, is um, it's, it's a re reduction in expenses rather than an increase in revenue. We haven't seen anything from Rita yet on that reciprocal tax. I don't anticipate seeing that until January, February of next year anyway. People are going to go, oh, what? I got to do what? They're probably not in their estimated payments yet. So um, questions on, on that? But the Tax change. That's all revenue. You don't. You haven't got anything from from Rita, but we anticipate an increase in revenue. One hundred fifty thousand. What was is what was mentioned to me, mm -hmm. or would be in the reciprocal. Mm -hmm. um, uh, sure. So, so you project a two million dollar loss for two thousand twenty four, but are you also saying you at this point you're feeling comfortable? with the 2024 budget. 
Yeah, I think there's some things we don't have in there. And um, what I will say about the 2023 budget, and Gavin's keeping me honest here, is he said, I want to see something that's real. And we are limited to a certain dollar amount for revenues. We can only budget what the county auditor says for two or three accounts that you know, they tell us. And we know that they're conservative because they never want us to be. Oh. So our revenues are always conservative, and our expenses are usually a little not conservative. And the reason we do that is, is we don't want to be nickel and diming you at council every month saying, oh, we need another 10,000. So it gives the staff a little latitude. I, close your ears, chopped the expense overage for this year to make it a little tougher to, you know, I don't, I want our budget to be real. I don't want to constantly be over revenue and under expense because that's not real. Um, I don't want to say we're going to lose $3 million when I know we're going to break even, which I don't think that was the case last year. I just think some things didn't happen. This budget's a little bit tighter, meaning um, we may have to come back to you and say, hmm, you know, if we want those two new positions, we don't have enough money to do it. We need to, we need to ask for permission. And that's what supplementals are for, so. Um, so would it be okay if I, yeah, we've had a chance to have finance committee to go over this a little bit, so I have some more context. Um, I think as I interpret the big picture, so the part that that's one big piece of it is the, um, we have been conservative on revenue, yeah. liberal on expenses, and then you end up with a, and so I think we're trying to figure out, that's a generally a good process, and three million on a, $15 million, but it's that's a pretty big gap, you know? So I think we're trying to figure out how do we reasonably close that? Because, um, I mean, so just so everybody's clear, like this, we had a $3 million budget deficit. Remember, we had a bunch of heartache about that, and now we're here, and it's basically zero. Mm -hmm. So that's, like, that's part of, there's no reason for us to get into the whole heartache thing if we can avoid it. Um, obviously, there were some big moving parts, some really big moving parts. I mean, $1.2 million that was budgeted, it's not a big hunk of money that was, um, you know, the ARPA money. So it's not, it's not that far off, but there's, it's still, you know, a, a chunk. So that's one story, that's one thing, and I think we have some work to do to figure out how do we communicate about budgets in a way that isn't, like, people don't look at this and go, yeah. oh my yeah, God! That, that is. That is, I yes. guess, the concern that I would have right yes. now if we're saying, well, we're constrained on what we can say about our income and we're being sure. cautious about expenses. We can say that, but then if it comes out in the paper that there's a $2 million uh, deficit projected, how do we say that in a way that mm -hmm. seems like we're being responsible, I right. guess? So I totally agree. And then there's the one other piece, and Amy, if I, if I say this wrong or you disagree with the characterization, obviously jump in. But I think the other piece is, is like, okay, so what if we do have a $2 million deficit? Like say we do spend $2 million more, like what if, and, and I think based on our conversations, it's more likely that we'll be actually in a deficit in 24 than it was that, we, that we're here today but that the deficit is an annual deficit. So it's like one year of spending more, Yes. Yeah. but the thing, and this is where you go down and look at the okay, that's, cash flow yeah, dynamic. We have a bunch of cash, essentially. And so if we do go over, if we do have a deficit as projected in the current version here at the top, it's okay, We're, we have the cash to cover it. The issue is, is you can't do that forever. You can do it for a while and then at some point in on at what pace you go. So anyway, there's, that's the two stories. Is one is that probably it's not going to be this big. And then two is, is that it's okay, but there's a line that it's not okay forever. But la my memory is that last year we said last, this, what, but this year was the mm -hmm. last year we could go. Over yeah. And I'll just say this once and then get it over with. Um, the way that it went last year was a real bummer. Um, the way that things were characterized, the way things were communicated, um, the way that the process went, it led to uh, unnecessary and uh, I think in many ways inaccurate confusion. So that, that was not the case. And I and just, I'll say it this one time, if you think this is unfair characterization, speak up. 
but I think we have been overly conservative about cash. And you got to remember that 11 million is broken into those lovely little um, restricted funds versus the general fund. So we do have 11 million dollars to spend, but we have to be careful as to which funds it comes out of. And and I think with the commitment to infrastructure, you're going to spend some more of those restricted funds, and that's a good thing because that's what they're there for, right? So general fund. It's our, it's our slushy fund. It's our, hey, we got to support this thing right now or we're going to help paint the water towers this year, you know, kind of thing. And I wouldn't ever want it to get below $2 million, which it's a 2.4 right now. You know, that's, I don't think it's a big deal. I, I think it's fine. I, I don't have any heartburn about where we are with cash, although you don't ever want to show the county auditor, hey, I'm making money, I'm keeping my money, and oh, by the way, I have a levy due in 2025. We don't want to do that. So we want to be careful. It's a tightrope. Johnny keeps me honest because he's like, I can't do something with $38,000 in the broadband fund. I got to have 138000 before I can do anything, right? So we have to let some of it accumulate in order to focus on some of the bigger projects, otherwise we're going to nickel and dime it forever and we're never going to get the big stuff done. So I think we can explain to the county auditor why our money is going up. We've got this big project, we've got this infrastructure, we've got that, you know. So I, I don't have any worries about that. Um, to Gavin's point, I think this budget is a middle point. We over, you know, we made it super easy last year. We're making it a little harder on the staff this year. Do you have the money to do what you need to do? Absolutely. But um, remember, there's a lot of things that come up with, like DDC. There's $100,000 worth of blah we got to buy for the subdivision that we're going to get it back, but it still has to be in our budget. So he's got to have a pot of money over there that he can go out and buy water meters and whatever, it, tchotchkes, things that he has to have to make that subdivision work even though it's going to come back into us. So that's a lot of the slush stuff in the expenses is the reimbursement stuff. And that's big stuff. That's big money. I, I think the only thing that I can say to go back to Gavin's point, you're not going to hear me whiskers like it was last year. You're probably not going to hear Paige whiskers because this is a, with Amy's leadership, on the budget this was a joint budget hey here's the money what can we do here so it was a great team effort to get it to where amy feels comfortable with this budget i she she didn't come in and say well take that one off take that one off take that one off it was like hey what can we do to make staff happy what can we do to keep things moving and let's plan out so we did. We did change some things up, and we added some money where we needed to, and we decreased where we had to. I'll just piggyback on that, just because that was, I think you just answered one of my questions. I just want to say it out loud. So the difference last year is is that what, what we saw, and that was my first budget, is that we were looking at like these long lists of all the things that everybody wanted to do, and what I was told is, is that that was different, that years past, essentially, those lists had been dealt with sort of internally and the village manager brought a budget that did not have a bunch of stuff in it and then one of my first meetings was coming into staff retreat where there were a bunch of people who were frustrated it seemed like in part because of some of the budget dynamics of the way things have played out so I think you're answering this but but the way I wrote it on my list was how unpe how unhappy are people on staff at this point with the budget here so I think what I'm hearing you say is is that you've gone through some process there's not like a this this but when you that this version of it feels like it's a and there's been some give and take already. There is. So there's some things in there that maybe are new, but there's also some things that people want to do that aren't. That's that's kind of the level we're at. Yeah, the, I think one of the biggest things is is <clears throat> it went all the way down to the bottom of it. It went down to Samantha, Ben, Brad, Tanner. And Amy was able to explain to them the whole process again. <clears throat> and she says, hey, give us your wants. Let's fill it out. We did the spreadsheet. They went through, added. And then Amy and I went back and tweaked it. And, you know, the staff is like, hey, we understand. 
you know, so. You know, and it's a, for a lot of things, like the pool came to mind, because Sam's like, I gotta have, you know, these are the 20 things that need to happen to the pool. Do they all need to happen next year? No. So Johnny, you know, and I went through and said, well, let's move this to year two, let's move that to year three. And so there has been a lot of thought process behind how do we keep the pool running without making it bankrupt us next year, right? So um, there are a lot of little things that need to happen and the ones that are emergent are gonna happen either this year or next year and the other ones will be pushed back. And we did the same for Lawson Place, you know. What has to happen, these are the things that are on my I got fixed now list and it, you know, and you're always, it's a crapshoot as to who's gonna move out and how many more we're gonna renovate. We budget to renovate two. We might have four next year, so we might be having a supplemental, you know. We don't know, but we're budgeting the two that history tells us we'll probably have that haven't been renovated yet, and then we'll figure out from there. So, um, two things that I would like to talk about at some point is the pool and Lost in Place. I don't know if they fit here or not. I just no, that's fine. Um, I kind of want to go through our little list of I, I need to know if you want me to put this in or not and then we'll and Lost in Place and the pool are somewhere over here on that list too just to get some of the bigger things out of the way. Um, Johnny and I met with um, the Community Foundation on 201 South Walnut. They're interested in renting, uh, long-term rent. They want to um, put some, it's about $75,000 in renovations and they asked the village to supply 50 of that. They're willing to put in 25 of their own. Um, and so that's one of the things that's not in the budget yet. So we need to talk about, is that something we want to do? What's the intent of that building? What's, what's the village's longe longevity plan to keep it up and standing? Because uh, I guess we haven't done a lot with it in the last many, many years. 40 or 50. So <clears throat> that's one of the well, issues. Well, the schools were supposed to maintain it. Yeah. Well, thank you. Um, just leave that there. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, what? Does that seventy-five thousand break down to? They are going to give us an updated proposal, but fifty of it would be from us, and twenty-five would be from them. But they're also putting in in-kind donations to another two. Right. Um, but so I, I know one thing is making it handicap accessible. Handicap bathrooms. accessible bathrooms. bathrooms. ADA bathroom, bathroom is huge. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then they have an ADA entrance. Um, that's the big part. They're not going to do a lot of renovation when we talked with her. Um, they want to keep the wood, um, pick up the carpet, maybe go back to the hardwood floor that's underneath it, do some cosmetic uh, lighting changes and things because it's a little, it's, downstairs is really creepy. Clean the um, piece out. Really creepy. Um, and just clean it out. I mean, I don't think they have some wild scary um, thought processes that we wouldn't be happy with as, as the owners. Um, the, the other thing that I mentioned to her yesterday uh, that they're redoing or thinking about is, is if it can be done in phases. So not dump all the money into it this next year, what can they do in phases just to get in there to keep things going? Mm -hmm. um, so they're looking at that. So you're saying over time, but are you also saying multi Years, multi years. Yes. Uh, what is that street address again? Is it 201, 201 South Wall? What number is being considered regarding rent? Um, we asked Amy B just to do a template lease for us, just to start the conversation before we bring it to council. Because if we're that far right, she said fifteen hundred a month for a long term lease. Not terrible. Um, but we also got to watch what we do with that building because of taxes. Yeah, we can't. We, we can't, can't lose our tax exempt status. Tax exempt status. And is 1500 still including utilities? It is, but the utilities are very little on that building. I think they're less than like 100 bucks a month. Well, Even when the school administration was there? Yeah, so I, when it was so. I, could, I could get that number, but yes. Okay. So That's not very good. I'm sorry. Having a nonprofit in there with people, that, are you, we've checked this out. Well, it, 
Yeah, I'm a little concerned that they pay rent, but I think because it, it would it would still maintain an exempt purposes because it's a charitable purpose and it's furthering the purpose of the village, right? I mean, if it, it's not um, Joe's T-shirt shop, it's the community foundation, right? So yeah, we'll I'm and the taxes on that are four thousand. I think they're four thousand a year. Does anybody have any questions or concerns or I'm interested in hearing about what else you have on your list okay. as we started talking about. So I mean I know this stuff is important to talk about, but I want to get through what you have in mind okay. and then circle then back with the questions. Okay, great. Um, so we worked with uh, tech advisors just to kind of level set with them on um, their costs for the year and I think I mentioned briefly we need a number from them to say we're going to replace you know a fourth of our um, laptops computers whatever in the next year at least to have a budget for that I don't have that number yet Johnny and I have a meeting with them next week I think um, so that's kind of a no-brainer got to do kind of thing I'm thinking 20,000 is probably huge for that, but I don't know what they're thinking. Right. Because we tend to keep things until we can't use them anymore. We don't, you know, say, ah, fifth year, out, we're done, you know. Um, but if we have, we have a lot of equipment in the PD, in the, whatever the tablet things are. What are they called? Yeah, our tough books, yeah. Your tough books are older than Methuselah. And so we ask for recommendations on replacement costs and, uh, uh, transition plan so so that we're not here every year going hmm, I wonder how much we have to spend well no you know we're spending 10,000 this year 10,000 next year 10,000 the year after that and we're going to get three four or five pieces of whatever so um, that's that's one excuse me Amy with regard to tech advisors are we on a month to month with them in terms of support yes we, we are technically still there they're bringing back a contract for us to look at um, Amy Blankenship reviewed it, and we do not have to go out for an RFP for tech providers. It's so. Professional services, yeah. And I think for right now, until we get our feet under us, it's really good to have Bartley in our back pocket. He's been very, very helpful mm -hmm. on things that we don't know about. So, um, so are you? You're basically going through these items. Were you going to list all of them now, or were you trying to get our like initial yeah. feedback? As Why don't we do? We we'll just kind of go through all of them now and give like an overview, and then we can go back and discuss each one that okay, cool. has um, controversy or merit. So at uh, staff retreat on Monday, we talked a lot about um, strategic planning, and it was in was it in yours, Kevin, or was it in yours, Gavin? I have them, but sounds, somebody suggested like a strategic plan. Yes, Gavin. And so we really got behind that because I think that's going to help us with a timeline and priorities. Um, having somebody say, you know, it really makes sense if you work on this right now, acquisition of, you know, priorities of affordable housing versus, you know, pay parking, you know, bias intended. Um, so we thought that there should be some money in for a consultant for strategic planning to help us kind of prioritize and. And I think whether or not we have a new village manager, having that plan or an updated plan is probably a, a good thing. Um, workstation, um, we, are you, uh, sorry, are you assigning numbers to these? I would. That's number three. Number four is a newsletter. So well, I mean, dollar amount. Yeah. Dollar amount. Um, I, for strategic planning, and this is completely out of the top of my hat, I put about $70,000 in there. I don't know if that's good, bad, or different. It's been a really long time since I hired somebody for strategic planning, so. And that would probably be a six month process. I don't think it would be a, I mean, it's, if you ask for uh, input from the community and all that fun Well, yeah, it just depends on the depth. Yeah. Is that a decent number, do you think? I mean, I don't know. I think that's, I don't remember what I was, Johnny, do you remember my number? I think it was 70,000. I think that's my number. I have it. I have all of it. In case, that's a good number. Yeah. That's a perfect number. Two so it's Gavin's number, it's not my number. 
I think I have Gavin's number. So then if staff like it, does it come off my number, though? That's what I want to know. <laughs> you know, does my number go down then? Yeah, yeah. You just go up in our hearts, Gavin. Um, the other thing that came out of the staff meeting was newsletter, and that's Johnny's. Bring, I'll let you talk. Um, <laughs> newsletter, talking about communication. I've been doing this for like seven years trying to get this implemented. I think there needs to be a newsletter. Uh, as a senior resident, we get a quarterly newsletter that tells you what's coming up, and it goes from all the way from the council to the mayor to the manager to the PD to the parks, and it's literally, and they have QR codes in there as well for more information. Um, now that we have been, I'm really comfortable that we can get that off the ground. Um, I don't like the idea of having it all digital form because as somebody that answered a lot of the calls from the hydrant flushing, um, not everybody does digital form, not everybody does the newspaper. Some people only listen to WYSO, some people only do email. So I think a different colored or delivered to the houses is the best option that we have. And I would like to start that next year. Ben put in a rough thing, was it 10,000 for the newsletter to be mailed yeah, out, developed and mailed out, and then he would work on the content and get everybody's input. So ten thousand dollars for development. I don't. What does that mean? Develop ten thousand dollars. I'm sorry, not development. To be able to put it together, send it to a printer, get it printed, and mail it out. So uh, that but, would be two on, on a monthly basis. Quarterly. Was it quarterly? I thought we thought. And quarterly, and we could leave. We could really do one at the beginning and one at the middle, just to try it out. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I. We can dig up old ones there. This used to be done mm -hmm. years and years ago. I mean, and it's quite amazing that we pulled it up in staff retreat, and I kid you not, I could go get to it. It's on my desk. What we're dealing with right now was the same thing in 92. Yep. So, okay, so, so $10,000 for the year. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, and then... And that's everything that's developed, that's, that's printed, that's, that's printed, and mailed. mailed out. Okay. Yes. Can I ask a question? Yes. Because I, this comes to my mind for various reasons. I know uh, this is divided up in my head right now. Individual mailers, we know how that would look and probably how it would, how it would work. Is it at all beneficial to consider add-ins to the utility bill? Sticking an insert. Well, okay, so going back to my hydrant flushing debacle this year, I don't look at my utility bill, so if you put it on the header, I don't care. Could you do the 911 services and have them for robocalls? No, because then people don't answer when it's a real emergency. So we are trying to eliminate anything possible, and if you have a utility account with us, you would get one of these papers in hand. We can see how it goes for the first one. And then people may say, hey, I want an electronic. And then we say, okay, we'll send it out in email form if we can grab everybody's email. Mm -hmm. yeah. but, put a link on the website. But to be honest with you, Kevin, man, when, when that one comes in from Xenia, my wife lives it right next to the kitchen table, and I literally, one night I'll read the first page and do the QR codes, and, and next night I'll read, and it's, and it's a folded out brochure, and it's really, I mean, they put a lot of work into it, and I think we we would be very beneficial to the village communications okay. to have a document that says, here's what we're doing, and then we can have another one in there. If you have any other things that you'd like to see in here, let us mm -hmm. So just to be clear, sorry about the distribution, so you're saying hand deliver them? No, 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 mail, I'm sorry, mail, okay. bulk and mail. And would that go in the utility bill or is that no, it would be a different it would be a different yeah. mailer. I, I think yep. different is different. I, I, there's a reason there's other times I've talked about inserts and I know there's a cost. There is. And, and, and I agree. I just wanted to hear you guys' experience yeah. with respect to inserts and whatnot. I do not ever, hardly ever, open my Correct. utility bill. So I'm not. Per, I need. To, I would need something separate because it's auto pay. Blah blah. blah. It's like okay. I'm still a resident of the village. It's good. And and the other thing is, I've asked Ben to check with the career center 
to see if they have a printing shop. I know when I went there many moons ago, yes, they had a printing shop. So I've asked him to reach out to uh, Green County Career Center or Park State or Wright State to see if this is something that Central. we could get on. Central State, them. too. Central State. Yeah, one, one, one of the Wilberforce colleges definitely does. has a, a, a Central State does. I right? used to okay. use them for Okay, um, <clears throat> Big Bad Broadband is a, a <laughs> I think we had a couple people recommend throwing some money at broadband. Um, all three. All three of them, yeah. And, and, Gavin and, Kevin. and we, I guess we'll, I want to talk through what would we use it for, what kind of, are you talking salaries, are you talking consulting, are you talking um, equipment? That kind of stuff, and how much do we want to do? And that's 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 a big topic because I think we're kind of at the crux of the road. We're either going left or we're going right, and um, we as staff need direction, I guess. Mm -hmm. So you want to talk about that now, or that's just mm -hmm. want to, did you want to talk about that now? Yeah. Can we, or did you want to go keep going through the topic? Do that at the end. Yep. Yeah. yeah, I think that's that needs yeah. a lot. Because the yeah. uh, if the dollar amount attached to broadband in the suggestions was fifty thousand, Judy, for your notes. Okay. Well, not, I, I'm not. I'm not saying that it indicates. It was that. not a Gavin. It was not on my list at all. Sorry. So piling everything on me like <laughs> it's Gavin. Gavin wants it. No, it sounds like a Gavin list to me too. <laughs> so was it? Was it? What? However many times it showed up, was it fifty? Fifty both times. Yeah. Okay. Um. <clears throat> Loss in place. Um, we did budget, like I said, for um, additional renovation, and it was consistent with this year. Um, but we need to talk about the housing in general, affordable housing, housing development. Um, uh, Gavin suggested a hundred thousand for a housing development fund. Um, I heard. Kevin had no number, but he thinks we should, there's some issues that we should consider. Um, Marianne, did you have housing on yours? Something. You have broadband on yours. I have broadband and um, So do we have yours? I sent it, I think I just sent it directly to Amy. Okay, it's um, not in the memo, or it's not in our packet, right? She had um, housing development to meet community needs of 150000 can you send, can somebody send, is that okay? Um, I think I'd like to see where, I know you sent me a draft, but I'd like to see You didn't get it here? Yes. We don't do it immediately, I'm just, yeah. love to know where everybody's at. Yep. Um, so housing is something we need to talk about as well. Um, just so you know, there's a, we did get the barricade grant. Page got the barricade grant for $95,000. Um, that's a revenue and expense to us. It's not in there yet. It's just a pass through, which will, I think, it, I was surprised when they said a year and a half. I know. A year and a half, and by the time it's a reimbursed grant. Mm -hmm. So we'll have movable, non concrete barricade, barricades. Um, nice. So that's coming through. I just need to add that in there so it's going to up the ins and the outs. Uh, paid parking was mentioned. I think that's a Kevin. Yes. Is that a Kevin? I haven't memorized all of them. So we need to talk about paid parking and what we would need to do to move that forward. And then economic development. Currently there's 28,000 in economic development with 2,000 for memberships in the budget. Um, more was suggested, um, more or less. I think Gavin had 25. Uh, Kevin, did you have? 40. 40. Just a quick, quick question I, and to think about later, maybe strategic planning and economic development get conflated because I think one affects the other a lot. Okay. Did I miss <coughs> anything that anybody... Gavin had talked about the basic income pilot project um, and working on hiring somebody to work on that. Um, There's the communications potentially, uh, you know, position, um, which kind of relates to some of the things that we've been talking about with Ben and with the newsletter. 
Is that in the budget or not? <clears throat> ben is not. Ben is in the budget at half time right now. To add him to full time is another twenty thousand. Okay. So, and then benefits. If I assume he needs benefits. But. Um, so the, that's not in there yet. Yeah. I don't know if this would fit in here, but there's the God part, the God statue, garden maintenance issue, which is not large, and I don't know where to talk about yeah. that, or if even to talk about it right now. We should probably talk about it, but I'd like to do that at, 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 when we get closer to the end. Before broadband. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Before broadband. And then also, um, is the website somewhere? The website's okay. in there for $20,000 already. Okay. And that's kind of a rework, give us a portal. Can we not search on housing and get 80,000 uh, documents? Can we figure out? I, we talked to Ben about it yeah. at the staff retreat, and he's really excited. Um, feels like he can do a lot to upgrade us. Um, we're on an old platform, old technology, and there's a lot of better ways to do things. Mm -hmm. And we talked about the portal for donations for parking, donations for EV chargers, maybe even getting TGL so you can pay your transient guest lodging and file your report through the portal. Mm -hmm. I mean, these are just pie in the sky. That's what we ask him to you know, tell us how to do it. A lot of it can come through PayPal, so it's not a big deal to, um, it's not difficult to do that. Um, he seemed to be really excited about it. So, and, and he has reached out to um, Bartley to get advice from Bartley as well. And him and Jordan Gray is meeting to connect as well because Jordan has worked with Channel 5 for many years. So, so it would be kind of nice if all of our communications, meaning cable and web, and all connected to each other for social media and they all kind of had the same message. So, if the full-time communication is approved. Uh, the twenty thousand dollars goes away, gets reduced because he would do it, correct? It, it would go more towards what he needs to accomplish it. And you're Whether thinking it would be twenty thousand dollars that he would need to accomplish it, or you I, the website? That's a stab in yeah. the dark. But okay, yeah, I've worked on websites before, and it's not cheap to re. So them. that number assumes. We have that, court. that we have him, so it's 20 plus 20. Well, well, I mean, most of the cost is in the people that do it, are doing Correct. it. I mean, it does, it's not cheap to do websites, but it's usually because of the people. So if the idea is that Ben would do it, he might need some dollars for other things, but it's largely a labor issue, right? Right. It Once is. it gets built, you get the right platform, Correct. and port it over, it's, that's the hard uh, stuff. Okay. And then, I guess the other thing, you talked about it before, but it wasn't on this list. Was uh, you want feedback on the cola thing, right? Yes. And then related to that, um, if there's anything else we should know about salaries, just you know, related to like certain positions or whatever. But also, I heard this thing on NPR about another unfunded ma mandate about the police pension piece. Do you know about that? Mm -hmm. So they're talking about villages or municipalities needing to like support an additional ten percent. So, in Ohio? what's that? In Ohio. Yes. So anyway, so I guess just I don't know that we can cover it all today, but in talking about cola and eventually salaries, I guess checking that out and if we need to make a plan. Well, and Paige and I haven't had a chance to round back from Monday, but um, shift differential I went through and. And if we start paying a shift differential, meaning those that work 2P to 2A or weekends get 50 cents or 25 cents an hour extra, it's, a, it's kind of commonplace. Um, that it's, it's, not, it's not hugely expensive to us. It's like four to $5,000 a year in salaries. And then you add the benefits on top. And, that, and coupling that with paying people to go through the academy at a low level salary mm -hmm. and building that pipeline, um, it's, it, I'm thinking it's $20,000 a year um, total, 20 to 22. Are you with me on those numbers? Mm -hmm. Okay, sorry. Don't want to speak so, out of turn. <coughs> can we just do a process check here? So we've got f about 55, you know, 55 minutes, right? We're done at 11 today. Mm -hmm. So we've got like, I don't know, 15 or so items here and any one of them we could talk about for a long time, depending on like how level. So. 
do we want to do kind of like a rapid, like you're trying to get like a temperature check basically, right? What I want to come through is, yes, broadband's important and please put $50,000 in the budget right now. That doesn't mean it has to stay, doesn't mean it's the end number, but it gives us closer to where, like I said, the budget's always going to be moving. If you say broadband's important, we're going to put 50 grand in and we end up saying, mm, supplemental, we need 50,000 more, or no, we're not going to do that next year, we'll just not. I want, I, I'd rag, like to do a rapid broadband, yep, Walnut Street, no, you know, that kind of stuff, so I can at least put a dollar value to it. Doesn't mean you guys have decided this is where you so, land. It's just for budget. So yeah. could we just go through and literally do like a quick straw poll of like, is this generally supported or not? And then come back with questions, but at least we do like a, because if there's something that's like a, obviously not, then we shouldn't spend any time talking about it. Would that be okay? Yep. Judy, were you taking notes? Do you have a, mm -hmm. do you want to read through them for, would that be easy? Okay, yeah. So the first one was renovation for 201 South Walnut at 50,000? Yes. Any, any? Yeah, general yes. for it, I mean. Any no's? No. <laughs> no no's? Okay. okay. And then your next one's a pass through of $95,000 for the police barricade grant. That's kind of a, yeah, no yes. brainer. Uh, the tech advisors slash electronics upgrade at twenty thousand dollars. Please, yes, please. I'm a yes, and it scares me if our technology is that old. Well, yeah. So okay. that's well, so yes. Like, it depends on where you work. Scary. Okay. Let's <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. My laptop they didn't, was like. They didn't get rid of that chisel. <laughs> Uh, yeah, 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 the stone tablet. Yeah, that's. A bit I just old. feel like we need a budget it's in order to. It's not like we're going to go say, "Oh, you guys all get new stuff." It's like, okay, who's right. next? Yeah. You, know, you know, we're conservative. And this is enough. Twenty thousand. That's my guess. I need. To, we'll talk to tech advisors and find out what they suggest. But have twenty thousand would get us. Have we asked them for a number? <laughs> yeah. Okay. We have a meeting with them next week. I don't. Yes. Yes. There's too many. And we're trying, and so we've not budgeted for a fixed amount before, but we're trying to get into that. Because we always rented them. We rented the stuff that's 5,000 years old. We rented for $1,500 a month for like eight years. And I finally said, can we please buy this out? Let's like not do that. No. Yeah. We okay. will purchase our own with tech advisor's suggestions. We will actually purchase yeah. it ourselves yeah, we'll without the that. markup. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, strategic planner at 70000 I'm in the, I would love to talk about this some more, but I, I was bringing, I didn't, so just so everybody's clear, when I wrote the list down, it wasn't like, this is a thought stuff I feel really strongly about. It's like, this is a big decision about how we make processes, and, and I'd like to talk about it more, but I think I would vote yes if it's like a, it's only yes or no, but I just wanted to use this as a chance to say, I would like to talk about some of these things. More. Could we put some specified amount in economic development? And then, you know, sort of like open the door for talking about that. But I don't know. I think maybe it makes more sense since we have that established fund to put it there. And then, you know, we can certainly talk about things that we might do uh, investment wise. Um, I think it's a good one too. Uh, I'd be apt to say more like 75 for kind of the combined things that you guys were thinking of in economic development. So are you, are you saying put the strategic planning chunk into economic development? Right, but keep right. It with, with the idea that that's something we're going to talk more about. Mm -hmm. So I think 75 is a good amount for kind of what we could do next year, economic right. development. Well, are we thinking, therefore, I, I don't disagree, <clears throat> but are we thinking that that, uh, and someone said uh, uh, conflating strategic planning and economic, economic development, and, uh, and, uh, and I don't think that's where you're going, but would we also, when doing that, that step in terms of putting some money on that line item, are we also thinking about the other the strategic type things like paid parking that, Amy, I agree with your thought that we don't just do paid par parking, we have a conversation with someone who knows paid parking as part of this from a strategic perspective and you it can guys help don't us tell us how many parking spots we have and what what will happen if we do paid parking here to the residential streets and the, you know there's we don't know that 
Yeah, if we're, if we're thinking that the strategic planning effort, whatever label we put on it, would also bring in those things and we end up with a thumbs up, thumb down, thumbs thumb sideways on these other things like paid parking. Broadband does not get into that conversation. Well, so if, correct me if I'm wrong, but when we spoke about it in um, Finance Committee, it was more the, let's take housing as an example. Some folks in the room, when you say housing, you mean, well, we need workforce housing to support economic development. We need this kind, we need that kind. Other folks are like, affordable housing. Other folks are, you know what I mean? There's a different understanding of what kind of housing is, is what we need here. And, and I think a good strategic planner will say, <clears throat> if you, you need this kind of economic development rollout to survive as a small village with these utility costs. To do that, you're going to have to get these types of housing. That's the piece we're missing. We just go at it as separate conversations without someone saying, strategically speaking, if you only put this kind of housing in, you're missing a whole chunk of your workforce, or whatever the answers are. But that, that was more the conversation that we were having. So a bit higher level than what can you do to pull in additional funds and more, OK, got the Honda thing coming. Here are the things you should consider doing. Can, I want to try to put this back on the rails because I don't have the bandwidth I, for until 11 o'clock. I got to go. So, what you said, seventy-five thousand dollars. Put that into what looks like economic development, and then that money, whether it happens or not, can be used for that strategic planning piece. Yep. Okay. And then that's that's where we are, and then we can talk about all this other stuff in a minute. And so that the only question there is: Is paid parking stay, staying separate, or are we lumping it in? Let's not lump any. Let's not lump it in yet. I, I think keeping them separate right now, and then Amy will figure out where to put the money. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then your next one is newsletter. Newsletter, ten thousand. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Broadband, fifty thousand. Yes. Yeah. I'm in the. I would love to talk about this more. It seems like a huge decision, cat camp. I'm just unclear. I've got some information. We had information from Osway. We have. I'm, I'm unclear as to where the project is. It's not like we were looking at a contract with somebody. I'm certainly I, open to the idea. I'm just I wondering. think we're saying we think broadband's important. We want to do something about it, or no, broadband's not important. That's how one I'm yeah. putting so, it in. Yeah. That's, okay. yes, so, it's so something towards broadband yeah. in some way, shape, or form. Yeah. Okay. I. I don't, I still, I'm kind of where I was in the very beginning. I don't, I mean, yes, it's important. Yes, it would be nice, but I'm trying to figure out how we, staff wise, do that. It's, it's that bundle thing. I mean, and how we, how we attract people to it. You know, how we get, how we get people on board for broadband. Like, yes, it's nice, but the general consensus is I already have my stuff and I'm sticking with my stuff. And unless you can save me a ton of money. Unless you can save me a ton of money. And, and the savings are coming. So broadband is coming, whether it's ours or someone else's. Well, of course. That's. I mean, I, I, I completely understand that. I'm not, you know, yeah. I, I understand that. But what I'm saying is the general consensus is it would be really awesome to have our own broadband and also what kind of burden would it put on staff and how much would it really end up costing in the end to have those other services available instead of just a separate service and that it's it's a huge question for me and you know fifty thousand dollars sounds great but what happens when we decide we're going to add a phone service who's the specialist that takes care of that on staff are we going to hire someone to take care of that on staff who's running the 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 actual infrastructure are we going to pay for someone to run the infrastructure? Are we going to stay with the people that we have now? And, and it, it just, it kind of just snowballs. So unless those questions can be answered for me about how we do that, like, yeah, broadband, of course, but what are the details about how we make it happen? Is it feasible? Is it just going to be $50,000 or is it going to end up being $100,000? Yeah. So as a placeholder, my 50 was going to answer some of your questions about who the who question. Okay. And I so. think, too, it's similar to the way you're doing budget right now. Mm -hmm. I think last year you got a picture that was very hard to look at and, and figure out. And I think that what Johnny's trying to do here is be able to come back and say, 
here are all of the options and how they might impact, as opposed to here's the one thing you guys need to do and all the reasons you need to do it. I, I think that's the, going to be the I, difference. I'll just put my two cents in. I think for right now you could put a $50,000 placeholder with Amy into this. Hopefully I'll have more information to share before the next budget. Okay. Um, and then we'll just look like that. Well, you particularly mentioned that grant the other day. Yes. And so, so I think to, to me I'm kind of in the middle of sort of what I've heard. But I think um, I'm going to agree, put the 50000 in in. But that doesn't mean I'm approving spending it until we talk about it more. Okay. So, it's a placeholder. Yeah. yeah. Good. Okay. I'm going to echo your sentiment. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. You're a good echoer. <laughs> <laughs> I think I echoed you, but yeah. <laughs> so then you got loss in place in housing generally, and I did not have a number uh, for that. Well, we had 100 or 150 were the two numbers that were brought up. Was, uh, I think Marianne was 150, maybe. Uh, yeah. Said, Amy? Uh, Gavin was a hundred, and but there's always the, the staff has already suggested one sixty-two. Well, that's mostly going to go to loss in place. Right. So the, right. Yeah. That that goes towards the renovation well, so that's and just debt. Paying the mortgage, right? I mean, right. There's forty-eight thousand set aside separate from loss in place right. in affordable housing right now. Okay, so we're not really considering, we're saying yes to loss in place, whatever needs to be done. And right. that's so the optics for, for me, you know, is we have, you know, $50,000 for a new vehicle. We have $50,000 for broadband, but we only have 48000 for housing. That needs to come up a little bit. For affordable housing, that needs to come up um, to at least fifty-five. Yeah, I, it just it just it, does, it doesn't look it does I mean I, I I get I get what's going on but the optics are not great it doesn't look good I, I agree and again since this pass is plunk something down let's get to the dirt later I, yeah 55 I think I also got the impression uh, Johnny maybe you know more about this that home Inc. may have a apartment concept have you I know Meg had a meeting have you had that yet she did, but it got shot down really fast. Oh, okay. Yeah, they was wanting to do it at the uh, Central Business for Education, uh -huh. right next to Cresco. Okay. And that's a, absolutely yeah. not oh, going to happen. Okay, so that meeting next week is not going to happen because I was going to attend a meeting next week about there's some there's some barrier and these funds can't be used on this side of Enon, but just on the other side of Enon CBE. That so that that's the the. Central for Business and Education area is restricted to businesses only. Yeah. It cannot be used, nor would I even recommend mm -hmm. taking that property and using it for housing. Okay. Okay. So I think 100,000 instead of 48,000 is yeah. a better number. Okay, good. And is this affordable housing, housing? What is your housing, Amy? Housing. Well, let's say Just housing, housing, community housing. Or yeah, needed I, community housing that needs community needs. I would be in the affordable housing camp on this personally, but I, this is another like it's a big, complex conversation about where our priorities and whatever. But I generally agree with more money and then look forward to defining it more. And that's I want to know when we're going to get like tired of in, importing our workforce. <laughs> hmm. Nobody lives can live here. So I would say affordable. That was just my. That was my. I would also say sense. affordable. And then if we have other housing needs, we can always, you know. Well, we have what ninety coming in now. That. Yes. Ninety units. So right. that's. Uh, right. That's it. Unaffordable housing. Well, I mean, but it, it also <laughs> takes. No, it it also, it, but it takes. Yeah, of course. But it does take care of that. Yes, that, it takes care of that segment. That, the right. segment. The bone study said we need. I mean, it doesn't take care of all. Okay. Well, it's affordable housing, good. 100K. Well, so basically it's adding 52K to what you had. Right. Okay. okay. So the number is 52 then, because since 48 is already there. 52, yes. Yeah. yeah. Right. Another 50. Yeah. Uh, paid parking. Yes. 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 How much? That's three. Mm -hmm. So, I, 
thinking about like app an app develop an app. There's there are so, there are so many there are so many municipal parking apps out there. We don't have to right. we have to just pay someone to map it and then so, so, so concept development and how much do we need in there? I can tell you that Ben is actively working on the donation mm -hmm. QR code mm -hmm. and we're figuring out how to do that part of it. So um, I'll just say that. Mm -hmm. I, I think when we talk big parking, and I don't want to go down a rabbit hole, we can put money there as a placeholder, mm -hmm. but again, I don't think we should spend it until we have input from mm -hmm. the rest of the downtown businesses. The downtown businesses in the last three years have all been boisterous about paid parking. Well, so if I we mean, can do donations and see that it's making a difference. So here's, this is, this is my take on that. Okay, okay leave them alone. Okay. We have municipal parking. We have the, we have parking lots that we ha are responsible for. I mean, obviously Correct. we're responsible for all of them. They're all the villages, but we have like, we have parking that we could put an app on. And then they can, and then there's also, you can build stuff into an app that if you have, if you work here, or if you live here, you don't have to pay. Like that's a thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, let's, put, let's put money into the concept of development. Like, we can't really charge for municipal parking here. You can't. People going to pay that fine to right. We can't sure. charge them. So tw 20, 20 or 25 and whatever that concept development, blah, blah, blah. I 100% uh, agree with where Karma's going. Every time I go to... Anywhere? Yeah. yeah. Right. Anywhere, Anywhere in the world? I just get out, do this gig in, and keep walking. I don't even think about it. And and so I'm, I'm, I'm you know, the pushback, I think, is noise, in my opinion. So, so yeah, we ought to be looking at it. So, I'm, 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 sure I'm open to it. The, this is why I want to do strategic planning. Because I don't, if we don't need money, then I don't want to do paid parking. I'm under the impression that we need money for things like affordable housing. So I think if we say, hey, here's what we're trying to achieve, and then we have, that's, so I think we're talking to the businesses, we're talking to the community saying, hey, here's the problem we're trying to solve. Help us solve for it. Yeah. That I think is a whole different conversation than like as though we're just like trying to add paid parking right. just to make things more difficult. Like no, like the only reason we want to do it is so that we can try to solve another problem. In, but in, I think we need increasing to communicate what increasing that. revenue. That's what it's about. Yeah. Nothing well, and we will have those meetings so. with stakeholders. We promise that we would. Um, yeah, I think twenty five thousand is good to put in there. Concept development, even if we can't find what Hostway did, shouldn't be that hard. We should just model it like Dayton so that yeah. what they use in Dayton, people can use here. And right. it's the same system in Columbus, too. Um, but that, I think that would be enough for implementation of a pilot as well, like if we did get there. But, you know, and I alluded it's going to that, take a while. Yeah, I alluded to the whole switch stuff. I mean, is it like a mystery? Well, you, well, you guys, I mean, you can obviously discuss it further, but you had kind of agreed to an interim placeholder of, let's see if donations work. Let's put it out there and kind of see what, how that works, as opposed to implementing. You got to pay things. I don't know that that actually came to council, um, but I don't know that we made an agreement about it. Like I, you know, we talked about it in finance committee. For I, a sure. QR code would be better than the donation box that got robbed. Hmm. Yeah, right. yeah, the donations oh, don't. Oh, work. so robbed. QR code does not get moldy. <laughs> no, it does not. A QR code doesn't get moldy and doesn't get robbed. What's your finance movie? Check that box. I, I think. Yeah. I think again we put a placeholder. We're not committing to it. Okay. Twenty-five. Cool. Okay. Basic and income okay. pilot project. Okay. Yep. Is that, are we there? Is, it, is that Basically. the next item? Yep. Okay. So I think I need to talk about this for just a second because I don't think what I wrote in like is not nearly enough to understand the concept. So the basic idea is is that um, we would consider. Um, likely an income tax increase so it would be like uh it would be going for an income tax increase which then the, the proceeds from the income tax increase would be used to do some form of and it just depends on the words you use guaranteed income basic income and then the question is is it universal or is it not so there's a basically there's a bunch of questions that are baked in here 
the idea would be that, so that let's say someone makes $100,000 a year, they pay 1% more income tax, they'd then be having, they'd be paying in a thousand more dollars, that we would have a line that would essentially uh, move it so that anyone who makes over that line would either get something or I think we could, we could means test the whole thing so that if you make over $150,000 or whatever the number we decided, that you would not get a payment. But that if you make under an amount, you would get a payment. And we could also vary it. Essentially what this is, is, is that we are not allowed to do progressive taxation. We cannot, if we could right now pass something that would say that the people who earn over $200,000 a year pay higher taxes, I think we would do that and then put it toward affordable housing. We can't do that by law. But we can essentially levy taxes at the same rate for everyone, but then spend the money, like we do for the utility roundup, for example, at a, uh, for some people more than others. In this case, so what this is, the idea is, is to pursue, can we figure out how to uh, essentially progressively move dollars to the lowest income people in the community? Um, and it's, no one has done this across the country. I've talked to lots of experts about it. Um, it's gonna require some work to like deal with the math and the implementation, and there's a bunch of steps involved. We have to pass legislation. We likely, I think, there's discussion about whether or not we should do a charter amendment. Um, but this is the idea is it's meant to try to figure out how to address anything that we can do to be impacting lower income people less as our community changes. So let me piggyback sort of on that dovetail maybe. So universal guaranteed savings. You know there are two places in the United States where a pilot project is happening now. Here in Yellow Springs and I think Reno, Nevada. I don't know why. So Inclusive Resilient Yellow Springs Community Foundation, they're involved with this effort. There's some I can't think of his, last, his name, uh, billionaire. He's he's uh, He's effectively the founder of TikTok. I mean, he he created a a system that ByteDance bought and turned into TikTok. So he's a billionaire. He's been here. Uh, he's talked to folks uh, in in the village. I think uh, uh, Inclusive Resilient is talking to Penn State University. That's taking on that. Penn. Is, there, is it Penn? There, okay. So just to say, this is a whole. There is a, there is. There are a couple different conversations happening through the Community Foundation. YS Equity is the most notable. This is this would be totally different from and separate of um, YS Equity. And what if we said that could be a topic for the strategic planning? It's my opinion that at this point we would be stretched too thin to be doing anything about that, and I'd rather put money into affordable housing and build up utility roundup by maybe having it opt out. I think it's at this point stretching us too thin and, and given that housing is the biggest expense, I'd rather focus. But if it, we put it in strategic planning, it could be something that, I mean, if it were a topic, it yeah. would be brought into strategic planning. I don't think it's a, I mean, it's a, it, the work at this point is to, is to figure out the mechanics of it. And my, the reason that I bring it up is because I think this could have significantly more impact for low income people than affordable housing on a shorter term. Essentially, affordable housing is gonna be, it's gonna take a long time, and it's gonna be piece by piece. This is something that could be, I think could be um, more significant for more people faster. So anyway, I'm just, we have a lot of projects to deal with right now. I know it's another one, so I get that. But that's, anyway, that's the, that's the idea. Well, I'm definitely supportive of continuing the conversation. I think having more of a unified approach, because again, these various, efforts are happening that are similar but different. I'm in touch with the, I mean, I'm, I'm on that committee, like it's not, this isn't, there are folks are aware of it, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, how many poor people are on that committee? Like, on the YS Equity Committee? I'm sorry. Um, so, I, yeah, like, I mean, I appreciate this, this conversation, Yeah. but when there are people in the room who 
like you're this this would impact people who were of a certain income more than affordable housing. Okay, that's 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 the opinion of someone who isn't a poor person. Um, really quickly though, the um, I wanted to, to put this in there under affordable housing, and I completely forgot. There's a woman named Angela MacGyver. Um, she is the chief executive officer for Fair Housing Rights in Southeastern Pennsylvania. She's a member of the Pennsylvania State Advisory Committee of the U.S. Commission on Civil Civil Rights. Um, I've been in contact with her for a few months now. I want to introduce her to you via email, okay. and I'm going to do that. Um, we talked about what Denise Swinger talked about, apartments, 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 and this is all that she does is find subsidies for municipalities and find money for municipalities to build um, affordable, actually affordable housing. Um, that was, I, like I said, I got I to gotta be out of here at 11. So if you do a, a comment up or down, what I hear Gavin saying is that he thinks there's value in figuring out how would this be done, what kind of cost, is this feasible? That that needs some funds to be able to move forward. Do you want to just give that a an up or down? Sure. Well, what, what, I'd say yeah. Twenty five. You feasible. asked twenty five thousand, correct? Twenty five thousand. Yes. Yes, and it's <laughs> the same as all the other things. It's a placeholder. It would require some work to get there to decide if we actually want to pursue it. But yes. Yes. No. Um, yeah, I, it seems premature to put it in the budget, but also budgets speak to our value, so I'll say fine on a placeholder. So that 25000 is that a consultant? Is that a, okay. Just asking. And it may be able to be diverted yeah, over any way to do strategic planning. Plan. Is that a strategic planning thing, though? Absolutely. So that would be an additional $20,000 to the... Well, I think that's part of the conversation because if you can find a person, a strategic planner, who says, I can include this in my, what I give you back, yes, uh, but if not... Highly not. unlikely. This is like going to require, you know, it, it's a math problem, basically. It's going to require analysis of our tax records. It's going to, I mean, so the it's a different project than strategic planning. That's got a lot of legal moving parts yes. as well, so. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Okay, so I got that as a yes, sure. as a placeholder. Mm -hmm. okay. All right, full-time communications position. And what is the dollar amount? I'm sorry. It was 150 as Well, that was a kind of a, it was a, a joint mishmash of yeah, communications. So that was, if you're talking about the thing I put in, that was me just basically saying, hey, it seems like we've got some capacity gaps here. If we want to move housing projects, where's the capacity to come from? If we want to move the nine projects we just listed today, like who's going to do the work? Like there's a bunch of project management that seems, so that, and, and then comms of like, hey, and we've <coughs> taken pieces of that, like the newsletter seems like a meaningful step in that direction. So I was just raising a larger conversation. If the idea on the table is comms from half to full time, that seems like a good stepping stone. You're talking about the bin position? Yeah, that's isn't that what y'all said? Yeah, that's that's well, that's what I would. Yeah. And the other piece, I, I don't think it's subtracted out. Will we pay a certain amount to eGov or just to maintain the website, which would go also go away if, if we got bin in the house? So it's not okay. So bin right now is He's half, half time. time, half time, and then. Increasing to full time is one fifty. Is that what you said? No, no, no. no. He's um, he's like twenty twenty one thousand. Twenty one thousand. So what was, this, what was the Gavin other Gavin had proposed a communication slash maybe a system village manager to help project manage, and his dollar amount was one hundred fifty thousand. Oh, okay. So but I, like he said, he was just throwing sure. things at it. <clears throat> on top of on top of um, Ben. Uh, the other idea was is to make Samantha, which is 30 hours that already has benefits, to give her another 10 hours to help with events mm -hmm. and planning as well. Uh, that will also ease the burden from other staff members 
to be able to have her dedicated is to that, that. full time then? With the she would be full time. Mm -hmm. She's she's thirty hours a week now, and she's full time there in, in the summer. summer. So it would be additional. So it'd be an additional. Hold on. Twenty hours a month. What, what about Eric? So what's that? What are those? Tables? Eric is administrative assistant, so she is communicating and doing other things. She's already. Samantha is the one that needs to handle the events from the beginning to the end. So 20, I'm sorry, so the number, yeah, what's for those two things? Because I'm not, we, I think we should break out the, the ADM and that's a whole thing. I had her numbers down, uh, she said. I mean, can the first pass be bumping up the folks we have? Correct. Bump up Sam, yeah. bump up Ben. Right. Well, else we, to, to we're the reaching person. into staff and the people that we have as part-time or as 30 hours <clears throat> to see if they can help us further the initiative of council and the village. And Sam's been here. And Sam's been here 21, 21 years. years. Right. So, um, so we're we're looking at adding capacity with the people that we so have. So 20,000 for Ben and then... And then Samantha's on. Ben, she's Ben's probably... So 0.25, no, she's she's 30, you said? She's 30. So she's probably another 10,000 if that. I have about 13. Okay. 30. Yeah. So how much? 13,000 extra. Yeah, so 33. Oh, she's 30. No, she's 13 for Sam. How much is your total? 35. So it's 35. Okay, 21. Oh. So then do you want, do you need the conversation about the other position or no. no, I don't think so. Okay, so thirty-five thousand, and then I'll add benefits to mm -hmm. it. Um, Sam's already got benefits. Ben Correct. does not. You want me? Well, it's Gavin's. Yeah. It's Gavin's request. <coughs> so, are you okay with that, or do you want to still try to put in money for communications and? I'm I'm good with. I'm just. I'm just, I was trying to raise a conversation about, hey, how are we going to, you got a lot of projects here, how are we going to move them forward? So it's a, I do think we have a, like we're going to have a right sizing here, right? At some point, we just are okaying a whole bunch of things, but we, well, we're only at we don't have the capacity to move all these things. $478,000 additional so far. What's that? Four seventy-eight, four hundred seventy-eight thousand additional, which I had estimated about 500000 so. So there's a money question. That's a big picture we have to figure out. And then there's also a staff capacity question where we just did a bunch of work to stop, start, continue, pause, and stop a bunch of things. And then we were adding a bunch of things. And so this was me saying, hey, maybe we need another human to help move these things. I think, I'm going to go out on a limb. I think we have some capacity. I think we have um, some people that, like Sam, who's been dying to be full-time forever and would do a great job, and then I think we have some capacity within our staff to expand them a little bit more, Correct. grow them, grow them. Okay. Um, so that was 35. We're, we're, 30. shifting, we're shifting things internal to make it more efficient. So, so we're at 40, because you haven't figured in benefits, and let's just do that, just so we don't under, under it, and. Uh, and that'll come back more refined as we move through it. Uh, oh, Paige, do we need to put a placeholder in for the proposal that you have yet to bring to council? The PD shift differential mm -hmm. and the academy? Yeah. I think we do. Okay, so tell me what that title looks like. Uh, I just have PD shift differential and academy sponsorship, and I have 22000 mm -hmm. I think it's also important to note that depending on how quickly we move, a big chunk of what we're looking for to support this could be paid for with the vacancies and the, the budget right. work. Exactly. If we can do it in 2023, so. we don't need it in 2024's budget. Right. Right. So, 22, is that what you said? 22,000. 22. So I'd say yes to whatever Paige wants. <laughs> Well, if that's the case. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, what Paige already said. Okay, there you go. Yeah. We talked about this a little bit in finance committee. I, I support it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so now we're down to the train station grounds maintenance piece, which is really come, should come through PAC. 
That that was that, initially. That's the so God statue. Correct. Statue. Statue. So I got an email. I was. This is Nadia. I don't know if you saw the email. I responded to it. Um, as far as that goes, Nadia has requested to have a conversation with people that were originally um, a part of that. And the tone of the email said, not me. So, pack, pack, until, until you guys have that conversation, I don't know if you, I don't know if you got a chance to read the email. What's up? I think I've read all our emails, but was PAC involved at all? Yes, that's how you get the funding for the whole thing. And during the, as council considered that, Johnny said quite forcefully, who is going to be responsible for ongoing maintenance for this? And the response was, well, the, the village will, because it's going to be village property or your improving village property. It, it falls on you the same way we Gaunt Park does, Ellis Pond does, all the things do. Uh, that was the response. So mm -hmm. now uh, there's an email saying, I would like X amount of money for maintaining the grounds around the statue. Um, I, actually, be <clears throat> I can go one further. After Marianne's email back to Nadia yesterday, um, she called me last night to let me know not to do anything, not to send anybody over there, not to have any volunteers touch our work. Um, they are researching to see if there's other funds from other people because she does not want anybody messing with what she's got going on over there and don't touch a thing. So that's, that's a not no an option in terms of dollars. <laughs> we don't yeah. spend any money on it. I say no. That's yeah, but it's our property. Yeah. yeah. So that's well, not an problem. option. But, don't but, touch but, it. But we don't have to budget it as our as our property. We don't have to spend extra money. I can tell you that every time my guys do something wrong over there that she does not agree with, I get a phone call or an email explaining how my guys should know the grass or edge. Um, <clears throat> she is adamant that she will continue. Her and Jerome is looking at who donated some money to this to try to help pay her. Um, that's where she left it with me last night. So. Really, I mean, the email that came this morning was, thank you, Marianne, for your, for, for your email. And also, I would like to talk to original people. Correct. And so that, that put me, and that put me out, that put me personally out of it. Um, but we don't have anything in writing we can't is there like is there anything in, like these are these numbers that she threw out it seem like okay that's cool but where's the itemization are we paying you for your labor are we paying you for additional plant material are we paying you what is it and then this is an agreement that she had with someone that isn't here anymore so I mean and figuring out whatever she needs to figure out with Jerome and we can't touch things that's not an option so and what would be what would be really nice and I might reach out to her and say hey would you be willing to meet with me and someone from EC to to show us what your vision is but paying you for it is not a thing that we're going to do that seems yeah. oh, that there seems, is a second phase to that project right well. and so what phase two we can Phase two, she's taken over the majority of, she's wanted to do a, a snake wall and more plannings to where that cost that she proposed will probably double on a yearly basis. I find it super odd that just a person is just constructing a park on village property and then saying, here's my vision, pay for it, please. It's, it's very thing. odd. No, it's, it's, I mean, it's odd, but also it's not a thing. Yeah, I say we put a pause on this. With all due respect to Will and Gaunt and his legacy, I like what's over there now. I, I think since we don't even have any numbers, and, and I, I think this is getting out of hand, <clears throat> this pay me business. No, it's, it's our property. Let's just pause it. We'll, we'll maintain it. As we always do. Yeah. And who, okay, so who's going to communicate this to Nadia? Well, Nadia she, has asked to meet with me <clears throat> tomorrow, okay. which I'm willing to do. But whatever 
written communication we have, whether it's the thing at the council meeting or pat, whatever, pat, I would like to have whatever written documentation we have. So who was on? That was Lisa Lisa. Okay. It was She's the council minutes. You don't, can you, can you get that, mm -hmm. Judy? <clears throat> Thank you. So I think ultimately we need to have some kind of MOU uh, between the village and that group because what they're, group? what's that? MOU between the village and what group? And I mean, I don't, I think there are reasonable things that they could do to help, you know, take care of the property. Um, well, so we have, well, we have the capacity to do that ourselves. So why would we pay someone to do it? That's well, I'm not question. saying we're paying someone. Okay. I'm just saying similar to the tree committee, I mean, okay. I don't think the avenue is just to say, you know, you can't do anything, sure. nor should we be dictated to, you know, well, about the, village I mean, property. The, so, harassing someone, I mean, at this point, you know, the tone of the emails clearly at the, la the last email was, I don't want to talk to Carmen. I don't want to talk sure. to Peck. And I, so. Yeah, and, no, I, I get that. And then I, I just think. Dictating uh, what people. And then criticizing, calling, emails mm -hmm. when the echinacea is trimmed incorrectly or whatever. <laughs> well, so I, I agree with all that. I just you know think that um, you know there's an opportunity to just come to a, a understanding, and it doesn't mean I'm advocating for pain. Sure. So sure. And I mean, if, but if she would be willing to meet with someone, mm -hmm. I'll very good. Okay. Okay. But but it doesn't make as much sense to me in that Carmen's EC and PAC this is falls into that sort of bailiwick mm -hmm. and also into the village manager's purview mm -hmm. and the more you bifurcate the conversations if someone's wanting something and I ask mom and I ask dad and mom and dad mm -hmm. aren't in the same room we're gonna have a problem it's gonna keep going so I, I mean I would just direct it to the person who it should be directed to whether that is Carmen or that is Marion you're gonna to have to do all this now with Johnny, just to the place that it makes sense, instead of the person she likes to communicate with best. Right. So no money, though, right? So no. like right now, no, no money, no money, and no then money. we need to have more conversation. Hmm? So, we, so we need a direct money somewhere real specific, instead of bouncing from person to person to person to try to get what she wants, because that's what she's doing. Well, both of you all are liaisons on one of those. Yeah. I'm secondary on EC. EC. Well, let's not do first or secondary. Right. But you all are both on both. Mm -hmm. I'm on both. So she asked to meet with me. I will do that. I'm not going to promise anything. I just want to get as much information as possible. Okay. And then after that, we'll, then what happens? We'll arm wrestle. Okay. Well, I mean, Carmen needs that information. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's. So I, I do think it's it's not okay for us to allow outside groups to pick a favorite. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know you're on that commission, but I don't, I don't want to talk to you. I want to talk to you. We need to direct them to a person. That's your person. Your person needs to communicate with everybody else. Yeah. And that needs to happen for every person who wants a thing, from chamber to Nadia. And if we don't do that and do it consistently, we're going to have the mom-dad problem for it. So both the uh, council minutes where this was brought up and any PAC minutes where it was discussed would be open. <laughs> okay. Did we need to make a decision about putting money in for the portal? Is that, I have um, that on the list? It's, the website already has 20000 Okay. So that's like, coming. Which is gotcha. Cool. God's money, I would hope. All right. Did you have anything else, Judy? Well, you Chargers. You had brought up the salaries thing, which I yeah. So we talked about this at finance committee. There, you know, we, I think we have some. We may very well may have some like essentially some right sizing to do to get our salaries in line. And so I don't that we talked about it at the finance committee. So I'm assuming that y'all have. I don't I don't know what the financial impact is or what the. Um, but there were. That's a piece. Yep. So what right sizing in what area of people's salaries? Mm -hmm. So uh, particularly with, I, I think that's contemplating the transition. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I mean, so that's one thing at least. So additional responsibilities that um, mm -hmm. you know, we now have. Um, I think Amy Kemper's in that camp, mm -hmm. um, Ben Sparks. Mm -hmm. I 
two in particular. I understand. I understand. Uh, and, and, and Chief, I put something in my memo, or I, I meant to, and I think I alluded to, you know, why f folks have left the department. It, it is not enough money, part, you know, for an individual salary part of that conversation? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. I think, um, you know, I, I'm fortunate enough to have a team that's pretty transparent with me about, um, you know, reasons why they might be pursuing other opportunities or, um, and, and salary always comes up. I think it's fair to say that we'll never be able to compete apples to apples mm -hmm. with large agencies, and everyone knows that, but mm -hmm. it's salary in combination with the benefits packages that are offered to these other agencies. And, um, so, I mean, I think we can, I think we can close the gap a little bit, mm -hmm. with, without a doubt. Um, but I know it's a, it's not a reality that we'll be apples to apples. With gotcha. Other so I think so. I think we I, I would definitely support doing something to, to move the needle in that regard. We ought to try to figure out a. This is tongue in cheek. I don't mean any harm, but there's there should be a dollar value in not getting shot at <laughs> on, on a regular basis. Sure. You know, you know, talking with these other communities. Right. So um, again, <laughs> it's, it. It, that's a reality. Okay, right? Something. I mean, that's a. Yeah. Except you, know. you get shot at in a little bit different way. Yeah. yeah. But also, you know, in Yellow Springs, well, you don't have a here. SWAT team. You know? <laughs> yeah. And that kind of stuff. I think she had said there's opportunities of yeah. growth at other places yeah. that a small agency doesn't provide you. Yeah. So, sure. And that's to be expected anywhere. I right? still think there's, and, and with all that in mind, there are things we can do here to, to be a more um, competitive agency that are within our control and that really aren't terribly expensive to do so yeah good so i, I would i definitely support that because i i don't we ought to do something to, sure. to fix the problem i think it would probably surprise most that we have um at least percentage wise or per capita wise more college educated officers than most agencies have um, yet we don't offer any benefit for that so there's no mm -hmm. yearly stipend you know, green county sheriff's office for example offers a thousand dollars a year to uh, deputies who have a bachelor's degree for example um and and that's not something we do. We we get about five hundred dollars a year for tuition reimbursement for, for those who already have a degree. Uh, I think most would agree that a well-educated police officer is a good thing to have in your community. So yeah. that's just an example. But mm -hmm. yeah, I have a, I have a memo prepared for you guys for Monday to take a look at some of okay. the other suggestions I have. And again, most of them are what I would say more than affordable. Okay, excellent. Thank you. So those aren't factored into this budget yet, though. Well, the, and the reason we didn't do that is because I, I really feel strongly that the, the vacancies that I've had year to date will provide the necessary funding to, to move forward on some of these things because those vacancies will carry over into 2024, at least for the beginning of the year. So we'll be looking at, what, 16 months essentially of... Uh, how many? How many vacancies? Yeah. Right now, the reality is three, three okay. which is 30% of the department. Right. Um, it is a potential by end of year to be five. Sir. I don't want to wear you out in the meantime. Oh, I've been wore out for a year. You're fine. <laughs> <laughs> but this is something we did. I mean, there are a couple things that are related to the transition. There are other staff salaries that are, are issues based on uh, market changes and based on, I don't know how we would talk, just dynamics within our team, like sure. uh, Paige's salary as it pertains to uh, fact that she's on salary but isn't then them is essentially working much of overtime mm -hmm. so when the co the the conversation that I think people should be aware of is is that at least I'm not I think it's I think I can speak for all, I think the conversation was generally we're trying to figure out how to make this a place where you're not overworking and we're trying to change the culture and part of that means that we need to pay people for what when they work and that's going to require some financial changes um, so anyway, that's the, I don't know what the impact is, but it was a, felt like there were some, you know, not insignificant changes coming in terms of, um, you know, dollars. Now, in some cases, there are people who are paying overtime, who are getting paid overtime, who might move to salary, and so there would be some sort of trade-offs, but there's, there's just, it's going to cost more to make some adjustments. So at some point, it would be good to know, like, how much more. Yeah. So, and I, and I should say, um, when I listed off names, I was thinking about Chief Burge as well. Um, <laughs> yes, but I, I'm looking forward to that memo because I think that'll sure. be very useful. 
Okay. Um, the one thing we need to talk about is COLA and your feelings on 2024. Um, a 4% COLA is $120,000 and a 3.5% and COLA is um, about $20,000 less. So. Yeah, Everybody else in the, um, yeah. is it your village manager's group? <clears throat> All the municipalities yeah. and uh, added yeah. together, they average about 2.92% COLA for next year. Xenia is doing 4%. four. four. The finance committee, we looked at that whole list and three and a half felt like it was sort of on the higher end, but certainly not as high as some places. I mean, there are places, so, so mostly places that have unions and have negotiated year over year increases and bigger municipalities. Correct. Um, but so three and a half felt like it was on the right side of it, but and also acknowledging that it felt like we were going to have to spend more in salaries in other areas because our hourly wages have actually done pretty well when you add in longevity and you add in um, Merit. steps, <clears throat> yep. but the salaries have not necessarily kept up. Is that a fair finance yeah, our, our steps are 4%, so they would get, an hourly person would get 3.5 plus 4% and then longevity if they are above the scale. So they're getting a 7.5% raise when salaried people are averaging 5. So it's getting squished. Mm -hmm. Well, it sounds like <laughs> it's the beginning of time. Yeah, yeah. the gap yeah. Yeah, right. is like that. It sounds like a lot of smart folks have thought about this. Information has been gathered from the region. Y'all come up with three and a half. That sounds right. Yeah. Okay. I have good knowledge now that you've kind of <laughs> told me what we need to do. I can push these numbers through and get it back to you. Right now we're at $483,000 more for some of our placeholders. Um, I will move the tree people from salaries to professional fees, which will probably decrease our expense a little bit, and I'm sure something else will come up. Um, we had a couple people put in sponsorship requests, um, Pride for 5000 and Wait, we did? Yeah. yeah, I got them yesterday. Well, they need to come they up with the money. I can't. Yeah, I just got them last night. Do a thing. Yeah, we got them right before she left. Well, if Sam and I are, I'm sending my stuff to Sam. Sam's sending her stuff to me. So if Sam gets it, I get it. Pride, who else? Um, Art on the Lawn. I haven't even read Art on the Lawn. And you had another one, too. I sent Kevin. Uh, yeah, I saw that was. So, just. MLK. For y'all. I guess for the next meeting. So we just added a bunch of stuff, right? One of the dynamics in the past has been like, a, so I, as I'm looking at this, it seems like several of these things are seem like there's staff support. And I, I guess I assume that that means that there's like a recognition that these are, or an idea these are generally good expenses, you know, good. I know that there are things that came off of your budget that, you know, staff lost in their budgets that before here. So I guess I just one of the I would continue want to continue to get feedback from if staff looks at this and goes wait a minute I have a project that I think is more important or is a better investment than that that I'd certainly be open to that I, I like the idea of all these things are prioritized you know equally. Well, I think honestly Ben and Tanner and Brad and um, everybody had input and Sam um, had their input and I don't know that we like guillotined no. anybody. We just said, hey, what if we did this instead of this? Or this comes this year and this comes next year. And everybody's like, that's good. That's good. Well, one thing that I, I did not put on here, but it's coming to council on Monday, I'd like to highlight just a little bit before you go leave, mm -hmm. is the Light Up Navajo Nation. If you guys Man. have not seen the video, yeah. please right. watch the video. Ben will be at the meeting on Monday. Uh, we've been trying to do this for a couple of years. We did not have the staff capacity. Council allowing us to change staff. We now have the capacity. We now have guys that are dedicated and want to go for the experience for everything. So Ben's going to be able to talk and answer questions, but it is money that we will have to pay out. But it's also money that AMP will be able to reimburse us some of the cost as a grant. Mm -hmm. So. 
I personally would love to go, but I don't think it's going to happen. I, but Ben's got a team that mm -hmm. is going to go. Um, so be prepared for Monday. If you've not watched the video, please watch the video. If y'all don't know by now, I will cry at the drop of a hat. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That see video. These, those that, tough old bearded yeah, workers so, and they're all yeah. tearing up. Oh so God. here's the crazy part about that. There was actually a resident from the Navajo Nation that spoke at the M conference and there wasn't a dry eye in the house. I'm telling you. Yeah. It was yeah. it's it's pretty eye opening. Yeah. Definitely. You sent this out or I did. Yeah. 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 Uh, real quick. Judy and I yesterday were working on an issue that could impact It Kevin. should be corrected already. So I sent you. Yeah, that they're working they're on. They're sending out new ballots. So, so, for, so if anybody who did early voting or anything, they're going to get yeah. a new one? Yeah. Okay. I saw Yellow Springs has a relationship with the Na with the Navajo Nation. Okay. Um, and we, we have. Um, specifically with water issues um i'm gonna reach out and i'll, I'll get back okay. i'll get back because it would be really it would be really nice if we could have there's a guy i have in mind who could come and like speak or at least zoom okay hmm? awesome. mm -hmm. i i think amy and i have talked about twenty thousand just as a placeholder Let's throw it on because yes. and it has been set up. Cool. It's been because cool. understanding that some of the costs are going to be thrown back. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you for all that you do. Yeah, thanks a lot. Great work. Good session. Hmm, that's something I want to move to adjourn. Oh, I move. Second. Second. You did move, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> you literally had figured to. All right, I. 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 Yes, I. 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 Yep.